Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. And today I'm here with the Raspberry Pi 3 running Retro Pi. And I want to show you guys how to overclock. Now this will void your warranty. I'm pretty sure it'll void your warranty. I take no responsibility for you guys blowing up your house or blowing, starting fires or destroying your Raspberry Pi 3. So if you do not want to do this, go ahead and close out of the video now. If you're not worried about it, these are only 35 bucks. I mean, it's awesome to be able to do this. So I don't mind voiding my warranty on a $35 development board at all. And I've been trying to push this as far as I can. And now I have seen online that some people are able to hit 1500 megahertz. I've seen some people that only can go to 13. Mine will do 1400 megahertz. The Raspberry Pi 3 that I have will only do 1400. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So what we're going to need to do is obviously have RetroPie installed on an SD card. But while we're here, let's go ahead and see what the CPU frequency is. To do this, let's go ahead and hit F4 on our keyboard. This will bring us to a command line. Now there are three commands that you can run to see your frequencies. You can see your current frequency, your minimum frequency, and your max frequency. All I really want to see is my max frequency. What is this thing running out of the box with a stock RetroPie image? And in order to do that, you type the simple command, cat, C-A-T, space, forward slash, S-Y-S, forward slash devices forward slash system forward slash CPU forward slash CPU zero now this is checking core one forward slash CPU FREQ which is CPU frequency forward slash scaling underscore max underscore F R E Q. When I hit enter, it's telling me that the maximum my CPU is running under load is 1.2 megahertz. Now that's faster than any raspberry Pi out there. That's come stock with that, but I want to get it higher. So now we're going to have to move to a PC. Uh, this is the easiest way to do it. There are several ways to do this. This is how I do it. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to modify this through command line. But what I'm going to do is set up a Dropbox link where you can copy and paste these frequencies into the file that you need to edit. So we're going to move to the PC now. You need a S, your SD card with the RetroPie image in an SD card reader. I am back at the PC. I have inserted my SD card into my computer. Now I need to locate the SD card. Mine is named boot and it's drive E. I'm gonna just open it up right here. I'm gonna snap it so it's easier for you to see. And we need to find the config text document inside of here. There's a text file named config. Now I'm going to open this in Notepad++. Now I will leave a link in the description for Notepad++. If you're doing any command line editing, this is the best, in my opinion, editor for Windows. It's free. It's ready to go. I'm going to just snap this here. So now we are inside of the config text document. Now you want to look down here. If you're using Notepad++, it will be line 43. Okay, as you see, it's ARM frequency equals 800. Now this is not correct for the Raspberry Pi 3. As we just saw, the Raspberry Pi 3 is running at 1.3, 1.2 gigahertz, sorry. So it says uncomment to overclock the ARM. 700 megahertz is the default. Now this here is obsolete for our Pi 3. What we want to do, I have created a 
text document. Now you can open this up in regular notepad. It should look just like this. Now I have several overclocks for you guys to try out. Like I said, before you do this, know that your Pi warranty is void. I am not responsible for blowing it up, overheating it, destroying it, starting fires, or anything like that. So, I don't have any heat sinks on mine. I'm not worried about it. If this thing blows up, I'll just order another one. They're 35 bucks. But I do recommend you grab a set of heat sinks online. They're really cheap. Stick them on, and you'll be good to go. So, like I said before, my Raspberry Pi will only do 1.4 gigahertz. It won't boot any higher than that. I have tried everything. So right here, I have a 1.5 gigahertz overclock. I have a 1.4, a 1.35, and a 1.3 that you can use. And this is also the stock setting. You can put this back on line 42 if you want to go back to stock settings. But I do recommend making a backup of your config file before we do anything. Let's make a backup. So we're right here. We're just going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to paste. That way we have a backup of the config file. So let's get started here. Line 43. We're going to go ahead and copy the 1.4 gigahertz clock onto line 'm sorry we need to delete this first on line 43 you want to paste so now when you boot your Raspberry Pi 3 up you will be at a 1.4 gigahertz overclock I have overvolted the CPU and we're just gonna save this file and we can exit out of all of this and we are going to go back to the Raspberry Pi and make sure that we are overclocked to 1.4 gigahertz. I'm now back on the overclocked Raspberry Pi 3. Now, if it does not boot for you, you can always put the stock config file back in that you made a copy of on your desktop. Or you can try a lower clock. Now, I had tried a 1.5 clock the very first time and it did not boot for me. So I slowly went back down, and the best I could get was this 1.4 overclock. So let's check that clock. I have my keyboard plugged in. We're going to hit F4 to go to the command line. And I'm going to type in that max frequency command line that I showed you guys earlier. It is also listed in the text document that I left in the description with all of the overclocks, and it will be a Dropbox link that you can download. So I'm going to go ahead and do this cat space forward slash sys forward slash devices forward slash system forward slash cpu forward slash cpu zero forward slash cpu frqu for frequency forward slash scaling underscore max underscore f r e q we have a 1.4 gigahertz overclock on the raspberry pi 3 as you can see the max frequency is 1.4 gigahertz so like i said if this doesn't boot for you you can try and higher overclock I'm not responsible for anything you do to your Raspberry Pi 3, but let's face it, guys. This is what these things are built for, to mess around with them, to get them hot and try to blow them up. No, I'm joking. That's not what they're made for. But I'd like to think that. So I actually have another one on the way. Hopefully, I can get a 1.5 gigahertz overclock out of it. If not, oh well. Now, let's reboot. And to do that, Simple, you can press Control Alt Delete, or we can just type in sudo reboot and hit enter.
now you're running a whatever overclock you were safe with, but I'm running a 1.4 gigahertz overclock on the Raspberry Pi 3 in Retro Pi. This should help you out in a lot of emulation. It's only a 200 megahertz overclock, but it does make a difference. I've noticed a big difference in the uh, N64 emulation when overclocking. I mean, if you guys really want to try it, try to go higher. Like I said, I do recommend some heat sinks or even just a little fan on the unit. Um, other thing is, another warning. I am not responsible for you blowing up your Raspberry Pi 3. Your Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi, anything. No fires, no nothing. I'm not responsible for it. So this is at your own risk. Go ahead and try it if you'd like. It will void, void your warranty, so just know that. And this is what we're here for, guys. This is what we do. I mean, you got a Raspberry Pi to mess around with it, so mess around with it. I appreciate you guys watching. If this helped you out at all, if you could help me out and hit that like button and subscribe and possibly share this on your social media if you got any other friends that like to mess around with these little boards, this should help a lot of people out on overclocking the Raspberry Pi 3 running a Retro Pi. Thanks for watching.